What is up everyone it's Saber here and welcome to another Naruto What If. If you end up liking the video please consider subscribing, it's free and you can take it back at any time and it really helps me out and this is my third channel so if you want some more what ifs go check out my other channels. And with all of the YouTube formalities out of the way let's get into it. Crows wheeled overhead in morning light as the Battle of the Blackwater drew to a painful vicious end Lannister men fought and died like dogs in the streets and alleys of King's Landing not lions dogs the defenders had fought long into the night and now as morning came as the sun cast its bloody rays upon the red keep they fought harder still a brave few ferociously fought to the last and died valiantly for their efforts others turned their cloak and turned on their fellows in the hopes of being spared by the invaders still a great many more including women and children took heel and fled quitting the city altogether those sorry souls would live to tell of this dark day spread tales of the night that the lion fell Baratheon Stark Tyrell three great houses laid claim to this task united in one common purpose one goal the last time such forces came together the mighty Targaryens themselves were laid low by themselves, separate any one of them would have surely failed against the Lannister's Stannis Baratheon possessed a singular drive but faced a difficult siege Rob Stark had too few men Mace Tyrell was entirely too cowardly and afraid to assault the Red Keep alone yes alone any one of them would have surely had a hard time of it perhaps even failed in the undertaking together however together more than a hundred thousand men surged into King's Landing and laid into it from within and without unprepared for such an assault and with word of the King's abrupt assassination Spreading like the very wildfire wielded against them many began to lose hope the moment the gates were breached they abandoned it altogether the wise and cowardly fled those men brave of foolish enough to stand their ground were mowed down on spear and sword in turn as were those who ordered them to their deaths for we know the fate of tyrants and those who serve them do we not they come crashing down for King Joffrey Rob Stark barely heard the defenders, terrified cry as he stormed the Steps to the Red Keep a single guard dared to bar his path eyes half crazed with fear sword quivering in his hands armor loose and ill-fitting. The boy looked every like he'd been pressed into service only days if not hours before the siege had begun and that had been hours ago no with anger in hand and wrath blazing in his heart he wasn't hearing much at all roaring he lunged under the next man's desperate swing parried the next wild sweep with the back of his hilt and gutted him like a pig. For a fleeting pivotal moment the guard hung on the end of his sword gurgling in distress his mouth a bloody orifice of agony then Rob ripped his weapon free with a vicious yank leaving the Lannister's entrails to spatter the stairs in grisly red relief a discarded canvas left to rot he didn't linger to hear the man's last words or even watch him bleed out he was already moving on up the stairs cutting the next man down cries went up from those behind him the king in the north Rob didn't want to hear the words, but he did he heard them heard it all the young wolf tried to ignore the assault on his senses, the sound of angry crows wheeling overhead vicious dark shapes in the waxing light of the rising sun the ascent of fire and smoke the screams as Stannis and Mace Tyrell sacked the city through nigh and well into the morning it had been a long and brutish night, those few who surrendered when the gates fell had been spared the remaining defenders and there were many were still putting up a fight fighting them block by city block thus far he'd put nearly every one of them to the sword in this matter at least he proved partially successful but try as he might he couldn't blot the sights out women were taken men slaughtered children wept the Lannisters had brought this upon themselves Rob hardened his heart and willed himself to press onward to not care for the plight of those around him they brought this upon themselves, for their defiance Stannis had honored his word and more to deliver him here no promises had been made for the populace this was not his fault he told himself he was not to blame and he'd no men to spare in their defense he could only end their suffering by finishing this battle once and for all of course to do that he had to find Stannis's man and all this chaos the soon to be king's instructions had been almost painfully vague on that matter but they'd at least provided him with a guideline head for the throne so he'd made for the red keep it was here that his true goal awaited and it was here that the fighting was at its absolute thickest, he'd cut down 10 men so far and the defenders showed no sign of slowing or stopping perhaps in knowing that the city was lost and reinforcements denied them they'd gone mad or mayhaps they simply intended to take as many men with them as they could before they fell whatever the case they fought like men possessed screaming and shouting to the last and so Rob fought Grey Wind at his right and flanked by his most trusted men he ran headlong into battle and damned be the consequences once such a position would have been reserved for Theon Greyjoy a loyal and trusted friend a brother in arms but Theon had betrayed him a debt that would be paid in full and that spot was left empty so he fought alone dread coiling in his heart like an angry snake a spearman charged him and was summarily intercepted by Roose Bolton his weapon shattered like kindly before long his body matched 
Bedivus broken Lancerob stepped over his corpse and pressed on fierce and dauntless in the face of the enemy now his only thoughts were dark ones haunting each step battle lust was well and truly upon Rob now, he had never fought with such ferocity in his life soldiers fought and died around him but he scarcely noticed their passing and barely felt the thing he saw his father's death when he closed his eyes to blink, images of Sansa or Arya suffering such a fate or worse haunted him like. His own shadow no he couldn't bear the thought of it to come so far only to lose them merely thinking of it threatened to shatter him so utterly that he'd never recover grey wind worried at a man's throat his muzzle coming up red the next to rush him met a similar fate, torn apart and cast aside like rotten meat before long it began to seem as if their group was the only invading party present in the red keep at all the dull crunch of bone meeting metal set otherwise ga in the next instant a. Severed head came careening around the corner one of the men wasn't quick enough and the flying projectile smashed him in the gut flinging him down in a heap before caroming off a wall to land at Rob's feet helmet and all visage frozen in a rictus of shock and fear the face gopped up at the young wolf as though the defender were truly startled to see him after a moment's disgust the Stark edged it away with his boot weary the young wolf, edged around the corner is that all you've got and found. A pair of men were engaged in rigorous combat not with each other but with half a dozen Lannister men three as axe and dagger met in a man's flesh whomever these men were they clearly knew how to fight, the one wielding daggers better than most parrying one blade he lashed out with another valyrian steel crashing harshly against crude iron a flourish of a repost ripped the man's weapon free and buried the second dagger hilt deep in the defender's chest in the same motion he swept the legs of his other attacker and sent him crashing to the floor in a heap of frenzied curses and thrashing limbs by then a third foe was upon him and his valiant efforts secured him a vicious strike to the face that left him gurgling blood and teeth daggers fell and the man gurgled no more a knife took him in the back drawing a strangled snarl from the assassin before his final victim could recover the masked man pounced tackling him to the ground and holding him fast writhing around the thrashing man he wrapped an arm around his throat keeping his victim locked in an iron grip until their struggles ceased entirely just like that three men were dead at his hands and he seemed no worse for the war ha a young voiced crowed within the mask that's fifty i will see the giant beside him for what else could one possibly call this great goliath of a man fought just as ably with sheer force blades bounced off the brute's thick armor with a thunderous clang heralding a deathly knell for their wielders a large hand snaked out with frightening speed crushing a Lannister's throat and casting him aside into his fellows they clamored to right themselves but too slowly with a mighty grunt the massive man's right arm arced back to heft an axe of gigantic proportions bringing it to bear upon the unfortunate guards a single stroke of that fell weapon and the remainder fell their heads, caved in like rotten fruit. And just like that the brawl was over and the pair were left standing bloody triumphant I think the masked one said after a moment I won our little contest Ulrich the larger one exchanged a glance with his shorter companion and promptly burst into bountiful laughter oh those last one made 51 for me I killed a king he's worth more points that you did it was surreal watching them bicker over such astronomical kill, counts and what was this about a king had the short one killed Joffrey given. That display just now it was certainly possible whomever they were they did not wear Lannister colors those of Mace or Stannis or even those of his own men indeed their uniform black vestments identified them as nothing and no one Rob drew up short at the sight of them uncertain of what to do whether to attack or call out were these the allies Stannis had spoken of they seemed more assassins and sellswords than actual soldiers decency demanded that he make his presence known yet this was war. And any men who gloated over such death were sure to be in the end that choice was made for them Rob must have made a sound of some sort, because those blue eyes cut towards him with a sharp hiss dibs I saw him first quick as a whip the giant surged forward startled his men took to their heels and tried to seek solid ground but they were still on the stairs and with so many there was nowhere to retreat to beyond the crowded well they just existed Rob swore and raised his sword hold as. Swiftly as the man's assault had begun so too did it and the one in black lowered his hand the outlines of a frown forming behind the dark cloth masking his face slowly like a rolling boulder the giant drew backwards his masked ally strode forwards uncaring of the dozen blades pointed at him he seemed to spring with every step practically vibrating with boundless energy whether his blood was simply up or something far darker was afoot he knew, not only that he had a very 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 bad feeling. About this what have we here the assassin asked flicking a dagger back into his belt those aren't Lannister colors and you certainly are Kingsward no no I think a high hand scissored towards Roos and just like that the assassin was off arrowing towards the frowning man you I know you I remember you that masked head tilted regarding him coolly how's Ramsay Robb had seldom seen the infamous Roos Bolton at a loss for words but this was clearly one of them it was almost amusing really I don't. 
believe I've had the pleasure sir not a sir the assassin chuckled there was that time when I ran away from home way back when and may you know what forget I said anything a hand waved dismissively banishing common sense and leaving utter chaos in its place happened a long time ago doesn't matter now he must have seen Rob winding up to speak too because those gloved fingers slashed imperiously through the air right right you don't start talking wait a minute wait a minute there abruptly is ice blue eyes slid eastward to Rob's right is that a wolf a dire wolf he became visibly excited at the word eyes brightening it is isn't it bah the giant snorted that one's just a pup gray wind cocked his head aside puzzled as the stranger attempted to pet it oddly enough the dire wolf allowed him this the beast didn't even growl it was a strange almost tender moment and Rob couldn't bring himself to understand half of what was going on then incredibly the wraith paused to regard Rob anew straightening up your rob stark aren't you slightly undone by the untoward greeting the lord of winterfell balked and you are a bark of laughter answered the young wolf you don't recognize me either do you ulrich rumbled hard to forget your ugly mug what perhaps this will help a hand reached up tugging away the thick black fabric binding the young man's visage exposed were blue eyes the color of endless oceans and wild flame-like hair whiskered cheeks pinched in a slight smile and oddly Enough Rob found himself struck by the faintest sense of nostalgia a fragment of memory pricked at him like an angry thorn demanding his attention he had seen this man somewhere before once when he was very young, but when when had he really the assassin feigned hurt does no one remember me or killing me here breaking my heart ah uh, whatever I'm Naruto since you've obviously forgotten who I am the killer in black introduced himself with a graceless shallow bow shattering his thoughts no. Surname this his head jerked toward the giant and his left is Ulrich, but I call him the bolder white teeth flashed at the giant I dare say he's earning his namesake Mulric loomed over Rob considering the young wolf with dark eyes thought you'd be older boy he said at last Rob bristled angrily I'm not a boy ba Naruto gave a sudden bark of laughter you were a boy he said derisively fuck the word emerged as a strangled snarl as he plucked the blade from his back uncaring of the bloody mess he made in doing so that's going to sting Roos arched an eyebrow you should get that scene to what this nah I've had worse I'll be fine now then hands clapped he spun back to face them looking every inch the madman Rob secretly suspected him to be I have gifts for you lot Ulrich and his command the giant stepped forward and knelt unlimbering the larger parcel on his back Rob had first assumed it to be a rod of some sort wrapped in thick cloth mayhap a weapon he no longer used it wasn't until the Umber unwrapped the opaque shroud that he saw its sheath of wolf hide, and it was then that he well and truly recognized the large shape wrapped within it was a weapon he'd seen countless times before in his youth, he'd even experienced the pleasure of holding it once his heart leaped into his throat ice I always respected your father Naruto confided in a quiet voice his expression stoic as the young Stark accepted the massive blade he was a good man a decent man and better than most it makes sense that his sword should fall to you besides he flashed a roguish grin it's not the size of the weapon that matters as show you use it now then he turned facing an adjacent corridor if my lord will follow me to the throne room perhaps we can talk all about your sister sister the young wolf seized on the word sister not plural seven hells what now follow then if you want answers i don't have time to stand around hey it made for a rather odd and amusing argument all things considered Naruto hadn't stopped walking and in his brisk pace nearly left Rob behind in the end the young wolf was forced to vigorously hasten after him while holding ice lest he seem a fool in front of his men thanks to this impudent flame-haired youth this was made all the more awkward by Ulrich's looming presence over his shoulder the giant looked like he wanted to split him in two at the slightest provocation and just might given the chance that Roos Bolton and his men might be present to witness. The entire debacle was embarrassing enough Grey Wind kept up with the pair ably loping beside the whiskered one with ease just who was he do you treat all lords this way he asked at length only the ones I like the whiskered warrior laughed hoarsely Rob didn't stop glowering there it is there's the look I remember his host cried grinning and his brooding you're so damned sus because I love it my men have scoured the city from top top bottom but we haven't been able to locate Arya was that the faintest note of apology laced in the murderer's tone just now or was he imagining things Sansa however Naruto continued with a growl is here and has been absolutely miserable thanks to Joffrey I'll be happy to bring her to personally you once we've cleared the keep momentarily taken aback Rob blinked he'd expected some resistance not this and the Kingslayer I've killed enough Lannisters for one day keep him for now if you like Naruto scoffed or don't doesn't matter to me now suspicions ward with outright anxiety this was too easy it had to be a trap had to be if you're holding out on us as I said an irritated Naruto frown his gentle voice turning sharp your precious will be delivered to you at the first opportunity despite that wholly unnecessary threat just now as I was saying I say wait a man in resplendent armor hurried around the corner before he could finish moving with great speed Rob thought he might crash into the wall. 
but no he slowed at the last moment he didn't recognize the man not with his helmet down but the crest he bore was distantly familiar was that the mark of Highgarden on his shield as if to confirm those very suspicions the man opened his visor to the world revealing a handsome face that many a man in King's Landing would swoon for Rob Stark was not one of those men Naruto however afforded the knight. A grim smile Sir Loras the knight of flowers looked to be quite out of breath but straightened. Up admirably we've secured the safe room and the eastern stair he announced grimly looking as though he'd just eaten something foul it was as you said the defenders were stretched too thin to make a difference the keep is ours as are the hostages Rob didn't miss the subtle mention there just how closely were the Tyrells allied with Stannis had they entered into a formal alliance after all Loras's expression didn't seem to indicate as much, but who knew this was precisely why he preferred the North less politics than the South by far well done Naruto conceded with a curt nod now my lords this way if you please Rob consented to follow but still one question niggled at him how'd you do it he had to know simple came he reply oh never underestimate 20 good men as though proof of those very words their small company was met with a score of armed mercenaries just outside the door to the iron throne none of them looking altogether pleasant what was this a double cross indeed not a one of them appeared pleased by the new arrivals perhaps it was the stress of war mayhap it was the tension or maybe he simply didn't trust the beguiling manner of this strange assassin whatever the case Rob very nearly drew his weapon and likely would have had not Naruto thrust himself between them sorry sorry the blonde apologized amicably my men don't much like the nobility in these parts come on you lot make way for our guests Ulrich Eleanor with me at his command the unruly mob parted though not Without some lingering glances a woman with striking red hair peeled away from the group and moved to flank Naruto her piercing green eyes cutting into him Rob felt his hand linger on Ice's hilt he would be glad to find his sisters and quit the south altogether, put it behind him and pretend that this mess never happened in the first place of course he could never do that never forget the north remembered and so did he he would always remember always well then one hand braced itself against. The doors Rob paused just long enough to wonder what that stench was, but by then it was already too late behold my lords Naruto grinned wolfishly and swung the door open wide welcome Rob froze Loras gagged Joffrey and Tommen's severed heads were the very first thing they saw upon entering, the boys faces thrust before them on a pair of spikes like some profane offering petrified in their last glimpses horrified life their final expressions spoke volumes to their final fates one of them was. Even missing an eye gods above and their further back clad in a red guard's cloak and chained before the very throne that had caused the Stark family such untold misery by the gods he breathed if Natuto heard the muttered oath he didn't show it nor did his smile lessen I do hope you like the accommodation Cersei Lannister merely whimpered and turned her head away at their approach Rob recognized her if only by her face in the time, since he'd seen her last someone had stripped away that overbearing arrogance that so defined her and its place lay a broken shell of a woman her hair had suffered untold horror as well as well they'd taken a razor to her golden curls and they hadn't done a very good job of it leaving them boyishly short she looked like she wanted to crawl into a hole and die sadly their host wasn't having that in a few swift strides he crossed the room and took hold of her forcing her out of her despondence the chain itself allowed the queen enough slack to move away from the steps but the shackles still held her fast to the throne itself it was a punishment as cruel as it was violent but Rob found himself to bitter to consider her modesty Naruto even less so I apologize for her state of undress he remarked flippantly touching a rough hand to her face one of my boys had the bright idea to strip her naked and parade her before the men in the middle of a bloody battle the idiot a slender arm waved towards a broken body near one of the pillars such a Pity he was a good hand and an able sword but I couldn't have him disobeying my commands out of petty vengeance now he announced spinning on a heel and spreading his arms I believe that my lady has something to tell M lords who let Ned Stark die Cersei grit her teeth perhaps I was too kind Naruto bared his own in a smile far too false for Rob's liking now I'll ask it again who let Ned Stark die stubbornly she held her tongue I can just as easily ask Marcella the assassin continued with Silken Menace I'm sure she would be happy to oblige me the lie came easy to him and it made Cersei quail he wouldn't target Marcella. She wasn't a threat and he wasn't about to go to Dorne just despite one woman moreover Marcella held no part in any of his plans the Martells could keep her and she could grow old and die there for all he cared Cersei did not however know this and didn't have to she need only fear what he might do to her only living child and sure enough the queen crumbled I did she answered in a small voice good girl and your brother Cersei spat in his face for a terrifying moment Rob thought Naruto was going to murder her right then and there and deny him his justice what he did next boggled the mind slowly painfully the flame-haired youth reached up and wiped the spittle away from his face then smiling he placed a tender kiss on her forehead shame 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 he chanted softly shaking his head what a shame at least I'm honest with myself I may be a bastard but at least 
I'm an honest one, I know who I am not that I'm judging you mind I'm not we love who we love and damned be the consequences you're just paying for them a bit earlier than most a pat on her cheek and he moved past striding towards the iron throne with determination in his steps and bitter purpose in his gaze with a grunt he flung himself down onto it the very act itself smacked of contempt. Don't mind me he chided at their questioning stares just keeping it warm for ah abruptly the doors parted in. Admittance once more this time for an even larger contingent of men stomping loudly Rob recognized at once the distinctive colors of Stannis's men and sure enough their leader stood at their head armed and armored his own men were all too easily swept away and aside into room pressed towards the walls for lack of vehement protest Naruto straightened at length and finally stood relinquishing his hold on the throne and descending the steps at a brisk walk the indifferent mask he'd once worn all but dissolved into a triumphant grin with a cry of you made it Stannis pause just long enough to take in Joffrey and Tommen's severed heads to see Cersei's weeping form chained to the Iron Throne he didn't smile that grim look persisted until he reached Naruto what relation did the assassin have to the king and then to his great surprise the younger man seized him in a fierce embrace Stannis stiffened momentarily relaxing only once he realized he wasn't in danger Rob watched this strange Seen with no small amount of curiosity anxiety lurking in the shadow of his thoughts you've been busy he said by way of greeting at last Naruto stepped aside bowing deeply or thrown away Stannis gazed past the boy his dark eyes and scrutable face carefully blank then as if in a dream he moved past him and began to climb the steps all present Stark Baratheon and Tyrell found themselves helpless to look away. Stricken spellbound by the sight Naruto preened quietly as he watched his sire make the climb short though it was with a strange morbid fascination he and everyone present recognized the significance of this crucial pivotal moment they were witnessing the birth of a new king perhaps even a new dynasty Rob found himself looking on with a strange icy dread as Stannis reached the summit he'd sworn fealty to this man, what would it cost him the last time any Stark had come this far north in service? To a Baratheon his father had been killed and his brother and father before him was he fated to suffer the same all these thoughts and more swirled through the young wolf's head roaring like a winter storm and still Stannis held his ground hovering over the iron throne no wait he was turning then slowly regally he lowered himself into it a moment of precious silence followed Rob took it and observing the reaction of those around him Naruto was grinning wildly Loras looked positively rigid. Rusa's face was one of careful indifference not quite that of diffidence but something else the way his gaze strayed to Naruto made him wonder if the Bolton truly did know the assassin after all then Stannis Baratheon first of his name exhaled wearily capturing his attention once more it is done Loras hissed in an angry breath at those words at the sight of Renly's killer sitting so smug and content upon the iron throne the same throne that had cost Renly his life in the end all because of this man Stannis damn him to the darkest hell made all the more heated by the thought of what was come tomorrow he longed to act Marjorie would be made to marry the son of this insufferable bastard a son no one knew of and the very notion enraged him all the more his beloved sister in the bed of a killer's son not if he had any say in it he had to do something he would do something this was at his moment, he could end it all with a single stroke of the sword a hand twitched toward that very blade and froze somehow in that instant that second that sliver of time Naruto's gaze met as something compelled the Tyrell to look and what he saw there terrified him go ahead he mouthed the words smiling pleasantly give me an excuse those cold blue eyes were like shards of sapphire stabbing at him daring Loras to make the attempt he smile was a slow one the smile of a reaper was he quick enough better than him could he succeed Loras hesitated a moment longer then thought better of it if he struck here and now he'd be cut down in an instant no his vengeance would keep for another day it took all he had to straighten and maintain the mask of civility once more how went the battle he ventured through gritted teeth our forces crushed the last of the defenders nearly an hour ago Stannis answered answering in his own gruff insufferable way Tywin Lannister may yet attempt to retake the city but with his precious legacy so endangered he won't dare attack he seemed to realize the effects his own words were having on his audience for he permitted himself a rare smile whatever he attempts it won't be a direct assault the day is ours then Naruto grinned at his son with those three words Loras felt his world shatter son send some of your lot down into the city to stop the looting then find some place to clean yourself yourself up he spoke at great length I'll summon you when it's time and I expect you to be on your best behavior Naruto stiffen in the corner of their eyes the fire in his face growing dim indeed it was a startling change from the raving madman he'd been mere moments before then incredibly he bowed as you say Loras felt himself to be on the verge of stabbing Stannis once more but restrained himself Naruto this heathen this savage this accomplished killer of men was going to be his brother by law he could see the resemblance now. That face those burning blue eyes that fierce drive a willingness to kill but the drop of a hat and oh gods his sister would be. 
sleeping with him seven hells what had he gotten himself into some days later Tyrion hadn't expected to wake indeed he hadn't expected to wake up at all he had been prepared for the cold embrace of death braced himself for the sting of a blade or worse not some knock on the head mercy of any sort especially this sort was almost completely lost on him any enemy soldier would have cut off his head yet here it was still firmly on his shoulders so when a torch waved before his eyes it's muted flame slowly drawing the dwarf from the depths of his slumber Tyrwan was almost startled really so alive then even then he wasn't saying one about his certainly wasn't expecting to wake to a song of all things for indeed a man's voice crooned to him from beyond the torchlight humming a tune he'd not heard before death ah death tis you i fear won't you leave me be for another your bleary eyes narrowed squinting against the light and the dark stop he croaked averting his gaze stop that would you please I have a terrible headache what an amused voice drawled do my dulcet tones not soothe you not at all really ouch now Tyrion knew beyond a doubt if not from the first moment he'd regain consciousness who was holding that torch this would end one of two ways dead or trapped in this small room for the rest of his days as such he wasn't entirely surprised when the torchlight peeled away revealing insufferable boy standing beyond smiling softly, he was however startled to see the one beside him for their holding the very torch that blinded him so was none other than Bronn he exclaimed gawking what are you doing here the man's silence was chilling and so he asked instead what happened the sellsword held his tongue don't mind him Naruto interjected proudly pearly whites flashing in a disarming smile he's still feeling just a tiny bit guilty about his part in all of this I'll tell you what happened your bastard nephew the mighty Joffrey Lannister suffered a stunning defeat and death at the hands of the true king my father well my hands really he waved a glove digit in masked delight I had all the stabbing bits remember you've been out for most of it since I was afraid I'd hit you too hard you know it's so hard to hold back when I'm in the moment no I mean what is Bronn doing here Tyrion interrupted with Vitrio jerking a manacled hand at Bronn and why isn't he in chains why would he be in chains Naruto answered with a long drawn out blink he works for me and my father now what it was in that moment that Tyrion Lannister truly understood how thoroughly he'd been screwed damn him damn that clever boy wait he'd said father twice now Stannis Stannis seven hells the boy was his son well that certainly made things worse much more so was he a bastard then Stannis didn't have fiery hair despite his chosen sigil yes yes it's all very shocking I know Naruto laughed seeing his stricken expression but you've been out for quite a while master dwarf three days to be exact You'll find we've been very busy since them I hope you like your bed how the word tasted like ash on Tyrion's tongue but he had to know him Naruto blinked at the unspoken question nonplussed you didn't know he wanted to know how they'd been undone of course he did but would it be wise to tell him it would only be salt in the wound Tyrion growled how with patience and great difficulty his captor confessed with a grim look I was certain the spider would suss me out within the first week you know. He nearly did once or twice and I came close to having words with him but your insipid sister isn't half as smart as she thinks she is and my boys know how to keep a secret then there was the matter of my bloody temper. I nearly lopped off Joffrey's head before the appointed time then I had to follow you see what you planned after that well it just came together you're not going to tell me are you the dwarf deadpan blue eyes danced in the dark you'd be amazed by what people hear these days. He answered cryptically Tyrion fought the overpowering urge to spit at his so-called host he'd suspected something to be amiss of course the blonde's meteoric rise to power had been nothing short of astronomical that was Cersei's fault he supposed his beloved sister assuming she was still alive wasn't nearly half as smart as she claimed to be but the fault lay with him for not acting sooner for foolishly believing that the boy and his band of men weren't a threat thinking they were mere sellswords grasping for coin and status in these dark times but they'd been wrong he'd been wrong the boy had played them played them all now here he was chained to a wall and with that he suddenly realized he had to take a piss do you mind not at all Naruto waved Bronn forward take your time Tyrion stood and found both his limbs and bladder relieved in short order but felt little relief for it however fleeting such freedom might last he knew it was meaningless Within this cell he'd been betrayed no allies to speak of and was wholly at the mercy of his captor he'd been had and quite spectacularly so the knowledge that he'd failed to see it coming cut deeply somehow bronze betrayal cut deeper still not quite a friend but not a common sellsword either his treachery hurt damn but it hurt I paid you a small fortune a look of something resembling pity flashed across the man's face I you paid well the sellsword shrugged amicably Stannis's boy paid better and I got to keep my head a roguish grin followed as he slid the torch into a holster on the wall you still have yours too seemed a fair deal at the time a pause followed and at Naruto's shrug he added another tidbit of information your shit of a sister's in a cell somewhere down here too if it makes you feel any better Tyrion blinked it does actually the thought of Cersei raving and shrieking in one of the black cells was actually rather entertaining certainly she deserved as much for 
being a wretched shoe and all the lives she'd ruined, but it was the unspoken words that rankled him so Jamie, I cannot speak for him Naruto answered gravely his whisker countenance adopting a stern flinty expression the Starks have him as their prisoner although to Tyrion's great surprise that grim look softened into something resembling genuine empathy I believe a friend of yours would be heartened to know that you were well just then Tyrion, had an ugly thought instinctively he denied it I. Haven't the foggiest a pain tiny gasp almost went unheard in the dark beyond the door almost but Tyrion heard it all the same clear as day and he felt positively wretched something broke deep inside of him please he begged don't hurt her what do you take me for a savage Naruto snarked quietly amused in his mirth I don't make it a habit to harm w I mean he hastened to amend at the angry glint in Tyrion's eye those of the fairer sex turned unbarring the door I found her hiding with Sansa and after she tried to knife me she demanded demanded indeed that she be taken to see you at once so here she is a gloved fist wrapped swiftly and firmly against the door with great purpose once twice three times and the lock turned with a creak of rusted hinges open he commanded the resultant light nearly blinded the dwarf. He squinted glimpsing a group of perhaps a dozen or more standing beyond the black iron and pale stone before a shadow crossed the torches a slim figure slipped in from the doorway huge beautiful eyes watchful Naruto and Bron made way for her without a word the latter ignoring the vicious glower the maiden shot his way she'd lost none of her fire and it showed in the way that she spun to face his captor with a hiss whap Naruto's head snapped aside as Shay's open palm struck the side of his face with all the force she could muster visibly jerking his visage aside Bron laughed incredulously Tyrion didn't share the man's mirth for a terrifying instant he thought his lover would perish then, and they're gutted for her impudence and be left to bleed out in the black cells incredibly she didn't because nothing happened Joffrey's killer mirror shook his head spat a bit of blood onto the stones and sighed satisfied what have you done to him Shay hissed I haven't done anything since I knocked him on the head the assassin replied flatly idly massaging his sore cheek as the angry woman stormed past him no one's laid a hand on him since granted though I did hit him pretty hard whatever else he said seemed lost on Shay she knelt before him uncaring for the dirt and muck hands cupped his bruised face drawing it to her own soft lips pressed against his forehead then his lips desperate to make certain he was truly there an equally soft sensual voice purred in his ear my lion she cooed quietly holding him close my poor poor lion Tyrion felt his heart wrench and shivered to his very soul alive she was alive Shay was alive a hey, thank you would be nice you know Naruto quipped I didn't have to do all this for you Tyrion stiff and ah and now they came to the heart of the matter the assassin had gone out of his way to not only spare him but to allow him relative comfort at that he had not been beaten or assaulted and though the cell was indeed dank and dark he had a cot of sorts to sleep in and a bucket by which to relieve himself he'd even seen fit to deliver him his lover and tax someone who would have made a fine bargaining chip in the hands of any other. He'd shown him untold kindness where none was necessary, but was it truly kindness or was it something else what did he want what did he have to gain for this facade why are you doing all this look I'm going to be blunt here Naruto began slowly having little patience for lies and half truths now that the deed was done my old man wanted you dead on a matter of principle I've convinced him otherwise it wasn't easy mind you, if I didn't respect you so damned much I'd have let the men take your head. But I didn't he continued smiling in that odd way of his for two reasons first you're damn clever you might have caught me if you dug just a bit deeper secondly you've a mind for these sort of things you know how the game is played so I offer you this choice you can take your lover and board a ship to Bravos right now or 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 you can leave this cell with her and begin your tenure. As a proper hand of the king in my father's service the prince added sounding inordinately pleased with himself. What say you I for one cannot think of anyone better suited for the post accept it and you'll leave this bloody cell right now and I'll return you to your quarters Tyrion nearly guffawed you can't be serious can I the fiery haired youth tilted his head looking like a curious fox eyes gleaming in the torchlight I can't be the hand I'm the prince besides it doesn't suit me Davos was quite content to be master of ships at any rate once I suggested the matter to him I'm inclined to let Varys remain in his post despite his actions as for Littlefinger I don't trust him for such a position not one bit and Pycelle is dead yes don't look so pleased Eleanor butchered him herself we'll need a new Grand Maester now I suppose good of your last to do that Bron quipped keep her close Naruto's smile collapsed like a rotten pigeon pie she's not mine to keep anymore he said at last snorting and she'd kick your teeth and if she hears you say that probably with the sellsword agreed feisty ones are always the best Shay scoff drawing a melancholy look I suppose neither made no remark for the prince's sullen expression didn't have to Tyrion knew the look of heartbreak all too well no perhaps not heartbreak but disappointment instead narrowing his gaze he tried to remember who that had been Eleanor Eleanor aha yes she must have been the woman he'd seen Naruto with in the red keep pity she'd seemed a nice enough sort if a tad rough and willful in her mannerism Naruto was more than rough 
more than willful he'd seen him carve through men like butter during the Battle of Blackwater and knew it to be true that he enjoyed the act who knew how she'd reacted once she'd seen the truer side of him women often reacted poorly when they discovered something they didn't like he supposed Naruto wouldn't take kindly to such advice however and he did owe him an answer besides. But what to say Shay looked at him her expression inscrutable in that moment bravos was sorely tempting indeed but. The prospect of doing what he loved what he was good at that even more so Stannis was a harsh man but he'd always been an honest one which was more than he could say for his lord father and his incessant schemes Tywin would want his head for this regardless in an event would he fare better across the narrow sea or here in King's Landing at length he sighed if I do this thing for you. If I accept my old post he began slowly measuring the assassins delighted expression with every word I said if his sharp voice brought the boy up short when he tried to speak how do I know you won't have me killed as soon as I displease you Naruto blinked I never kill my friends and are we friends Tyrion probe sitting up I'd like to think I've been more of a friend to you than your twit of a sister Naruto replied readily the terms of this arrangement are simple never betray me and I'll never betray you fair enough Tyrion shrugged I feel I should warn you you're in the great game now you know why I am Naruto laughed it was a bitter ugly thing and it instantly set Tyrion on edge and the great game is terrifying but you needn't worry about me Bron Azure orbs swept back to his guard escort Lady Shay out for a moment will you and close the door the sellsword did as he was bade much to Shay's great annoyance you know I've always liked games the assassin confessed after a long moment crossing to the far side of the room they're oh so fascinating dangerous. Sometimes too so is magic reaching across to the wall he took a hold of the nearby torch and snuffed it out with a bare hand the dwarf started in surprise trying failing to understand what he had seen the boy had simply closed his palm over the flame and it guttered out like so much ash plunged into darkness into silence he found himself trying to understand the boy's brief bit of theatrics all that remained was the muted light from the door, but despite the faint illumination the room grew. Darker still but unlike magic a game is only dangerous Naruto purred in the black his voice darkening until someone smashes the board his eyes flashed in the black and his shadow seemed to writhe becoming something monstrous reflecting its owner's spirit then Naruto moved and the wall behind him shattered could light be black he wondered if that were true in that instant as fresh light and dust spilled into the room Tyrion couldn't stop gawping, staring all that remained there before him in the Black were those eyes strangely enough they weren't blue anymore they were scarlet red as an ocean of blood those eerie red eyes what Tyrion cleared his suddenly dry throat looking up up and up to meet those still crimson eyes was that Naruto smiled ruefully I'll never tell Tywin Lannister sat in cold contemplative silence his desk stood before in shoddy disarray papers and correspondence ripped to pieces in a fit of rage. The anger had left him hours ago cooling into a frigid lake of ice deep. In his heart the servants dared not disturb him. They knew all too well of his glacial rage his apocalyptic fury for fury he felt indeed fury at having been bested outmaneuvered by the time he'd realized the Tyrell's treachery it was already too late he'd seen the sack of King's Landing seen the fury of the wildfire firsthand as it was turned upon the very defenders themselves even then he'd still resolved to take back the city from Stannis at any cost to attack, even if it meant death it was. Only once he'd learned of his children's captured when Stannis's soldiers started parading Joffrey and Tommen's heads about the battlements that his will finally broke the arrow to the knee certainly hadn't helped matters any his forces routed he'd retreated to the fortress of Casterly Rock to lick his wounds and recover the Lannister ancestral home felt hollow somehow cold empty and cold as it had since Joanna's death, but no amount of injury no matter how grave could slake the hatred he felt. For Stannis Baratheon his brother Kevin was in charge for the time being and he insisted that they wait until the men had recovered by the man had all the courage of a field mouse sometimes and now his spies told him that Tyrion Tyrion would be named Hand of the King Hand of the King ally of the enemy while his brother and sister languished in the black cells below just the thought of it was enough to make Stannis seat Stannis, mocked him even now dark thoughts loomed over him black and ugly. If only there was a way to strike back at Stannis to make him experience the pain and humiliation he felt now him and that bastard boy of his he paused considering them slowly an idea came to him then an awful terrible idea wicked in its vindictiveness it would take time of time of course a great deal of time and coin that as well a Lannister always paid his debts and he owed Stannis Baratheon a great deal the lion would have its day Naruto, whistled softly as he stared at the tiny creature. Before him a dragon an actual living dragon HSSS he'd always wanted to see one. Mere books didn't do them justice they were fire given flesh creatures of life and destruction all the glory and wonder of the world paled in comparison to them yet here one was here before him distantly it occurred to him that this might be another one of his dreams turned nightmare they were seldom pleasant ones but if this was indeed a dream he resolved himself to make the most of it the tiny black lizard crouched before him would become a mighty beast someday but for the time being it was just that 
In infant years from now it would be much much larger able to snap him in half with a single bite judging by the way it was snarling at it and the little bugger was fixing on taking a piece out of him right now marveling at the little dragonling he dared to open its cage and touch its back his new friend didn't like that not one bit wow he hummed you're a fierce little guy ain't cha drogon how did he? Know his name hissed and nipped at his hand the whiskered warrior laughed hungry too then the little bastard opened his mouth and spat fire laughing Naruto watched the tiny eddy of flame arc overhead until an icy hand exploded through his chest a voice like death hissed in his ear. Winter is here son of a Naruto jolted awake with a hue and cry bathed in cold sweat just a dream he told himself fighting to still his racing heart just a dream but his body believed something else and refused to. Calm itself, despite his best efforts, thrashing upright out of the nightmare or was it a vision fighting not to bolt out of the covers he struggled to still his harsh breathing and eventually succeeded of a sort slowly sense reasserted itself and his dream hazed vision cleared enough to remind him of where he was enough to realize he wasn't alone with that he became suddenly and intensely aware of a warm feminine form, nestled against him damn it he certainly didn't remember that how much had he drunk last night where the son of the king rose and risked a glance at his bed companion reddish blonde curls interposed themselves over his vision and he felt his heart lurch traitorously Eleanor no not Eleanor his joy turned to so much ash in his mouth the face and body were all wrong, she didn't have that crescent shapered scar on her left chest either and was that a bag of gold on the table she had to be one of Littlefinger's whores then blue eyes narrowed to thin angry slits out the word was. A growl the girl stirred blearily what O.U.T. Naruto roared and hurled a sovereign in her direction and she shot out of the bed like a loosed arrow he had barely enough patience to let her recover her dress before he flung the door open and pushed her through it with a muffled oath that didn't even occur to him to thank her for the time he felt too wretched to waste time on such false pleasantries Ulrich shot him a bemused look from his post beside the door. Thankfully he was wise enough to hold his tongue lest he lose it Naruto glowered at him a moment longer uncaring for his nakedness bitter he slammed the door shut and stormed back to the bed a snarl escaped him as he flung himself back against the pillows pleasure was pleasure but somehow this this felt meaningless and empty that woman he didn't even remember her name clearly held none of Eleanor's fire the same fire that had so eluded him after the battle of Blackwater in their argument seven hells why was she angry with him so Preoccupied was he by these thoughts that he almost failed to notice the insistent pounding on the door indeed he didn't notice it at all until they started knocking most insistently upon the entry to his chambers what he croaked hoarsely squinting against the faint light a man and a young lady to see a the deep rumble of Ulrich's voice answered good old Ulrich still keeping an eye on him. After all this should I turn him away young lady he didn't know very many of those these days the one he did wanted nothing to do with him given the atrocities she thought he had ordered and a man he couldn't fathom who would want to see him so late in the afternoon gods he hoped it wasn't Loras having seen the man's hatred for his father firsthand he knew he'd have to do something about it the only other one who might want to see him would likely be Rob no doubt wanting to wring a promise of Sansa's release from him before today's ceremony as Stannis had been far too busy to attend such matters himself ugh propping himself up on an elbow the prince scrubbed the sleep from his face raked a hand through the messy mop of his hair and blinked the cobwebs out of his eyes let them and he said he'd scarcely spoken the words before someone kicked the door and slamming it against the wall with a loud bang sure enough Rob Stark was first through his dark eyes bleak visage stern and cold as winter itself he wasn't prepared for the sight awaiting him within and thus came up short he made the mistake of pausing just long enough to note the blonde state of undress and the sight took the wind right out of his sails the Stark's mouth hung agape like a fish and his cheeks colored fiercely whatever he'd been preparing to say dying on his lips the urge to laugh was so overpowering that Naruto found himself forcibly biting his tongue you'll excuse my lack of decor he remarked dryly slipping on a pair of breeches I wasn't expecting visitors Rob sputtered speechless was this how everyone behaved in King's Landing if it's your sister you want I'll endeavor to return her to you this afternoon are you mad just a bit Naruto tactfully ignored the young wolf's question as he slipped a white tunic over his head a pair of soft footfalls reminded him that he had another party to attend to the girl however was not whom he'd expected no not at all he'd expected Eleanor all angry green eyes and bright red hair not a young brunette in a fine gray gown with caramel colored eyes and Wait a minute Shireen for it was his sister indeed looking most vexed with him the last swept across the room and a blur skirted around a befuddled Rob and all but pounced upon her brother Naruto froze control of his body momentarily stripped away from him he stood there rooted unable to move as those small arms wrapped around his torso numbly he reached down to pat her head she squeezed him tighter forcing a wry chuckle out of him hey why didn't you write were the first words out of her mouth I 
thought you were dead ah there was the sister he knew bloody relentless to be fair I was a bit busy at the time his eyes cut to rob might I have a moment for a long moment it seemed as though the lord of Winterfell might protest but in the end he relented and allowed himself to be shown out northern folk you simply couldn't pacify them sometimes he supposed the fault wasn't Rob's alone. He obviously wanted to return to the north and ready his family for the oncoming winter unbidden Naruto. Shivered winter what was it about that that made him shudder so as soon as they were alone Shireen turned back to him dark eyes intent are you alright she pressed questioningly you look awful Naruto cringed and sat down upon his bed suitably chastised bad dreams he muttered palming his face never mind that what are you doing here father brought mother and I to the capital his little princess beamed taking her place beside him he said dragonstone wasn't safe for us anymore bestie she added he wants to present me to the court with you Naruto couldn't help but blanch a wise move if an uncomfortable one not only would Shireen be safer here in King's Landing but she would be a known quantity to those around her grayscale or know the fussy noble types tended to like that sort of thing more so Tywin Lannister would be livid at his loss and looking for an excuse to lash out at anyone with Baratheon blood in their veins, and what better way to strike at Stannis to strike at him than by there family he could care less about Celis and her fanaticism but the idea of a spiteful Tywin kidnapping his little sister or worse was enough to make his blood run cold but now she was royalty which meant she might be married to some crazy ponce or the like speaking of crazy any word on the red woman Shireen's expression turned contemplative I think father dismissed her she confessed after a moment of relative silence they argued after you left and I haven't seen her since she wasn't with us on the road either tactfully she left out the possibility that Lady Melisandre might already be here secreted away somewhere so as not to offend the more religious sort of King's Landing her brother's smile was almost too much to bear well that's wonderful but why are you dressed like that I told you father wants to present us to court she said it as though it were the most obvious thing in the world he's busy and I couldn't find mother to do it so I came to get you wait is that today a servant? bustled and before he could finish their waiting for you my lord they saw Shireen and hastened to add my lady Naruto groan let's not keep the pricks waiting then shall we the red keep stood in deathly silence it had changed much since he'd last laid eye on it thought he great flaming braziers remained Stannis had since stripped away all the Lannister banners and finery and replaced them with his own the ugly red colors had been an eyesore to many but they were gone at last allowing the afternoon light to filter into the room but even then the light was a faint crimson red uck he must rather prefer orange at any rate Naruto liked to think that they weren't so much nervous as they were afraid still squirming over the abrupt shift in power uneasy as to their ultimate fate good the stag and his allies had cast down the lion wounded it beyond repair Tywin might still hold casterly rock but his forces had been broken his strength crippled with his precious legacy held captive he dared not attack them where they were strongest yet neither could he afford to remain idle he could only stand in open rebellion so long before Stannis decided to destroy him he hoped it would be soon it had been some days since the Battle of Blackwater some time since the dust had settled part of him longed to turn and run in the other direction but he knew it was not to be he'd lived in the shadows long enough now and that chapter of his life would soon be over though his anonymity had afforded him much it was time to step into the light or barring that at least make the attempt but why in the seven hells did he have to dress like this the servants had pressed him into a fiery doublet and pants mirroring his father's colors it was suffocating he could hardly move in them and these frivolous tapestries provided no protection whatsoever he supposed they were his colors now or soon would be at any rate Shireen willfully remained by his side in her dark dress looking positively radiant at least Naruto thought so he couldn't recall whether this might be her first time being brought to court it was certainly the first time she'd been a princess she caught his eye and smiled impishly behave you wound me my lady Naruto clutched at his heart then laughed when she elbowed him all right all right I'll be good her full mischief mollified his temper somewhat and he managed to still his tapping foot as they awaited the last of their guests as it were they were nearly swallowed by the crowd and all the while Naruto silently took a note of whomever cast a scornful glance at them or said a nasty word to his sweet sister adding them to his list it helped that none yet knew who they were for once they did those feelings would be hidden behind a mask of servitude and fealty Naruto was almost silently surprised to see so many of the lords and ladies of King's Landing spilling into the Red Keep most were unscathed, it seemed his father had been serious when he'd sworn to slay. Anyone seen raping or pillaging as ever H 2019 in theory with the death of Gavin filled his heart with no small measure of pride some of his little band would no doubt be named lords and ladies in their own right today Naruto wasn't rightly sure how he felt about that men like Ulrich and Mathos might well deserve such a title and Eleanor certainly but others is that her Naruto blinked drawn out of his reverie by the 
Abrupt question who Shireen turned her gaze and Naruto followed after a moment his eyes falling upon a redhead is she the one you're going to marry Marjorie was a beautiful girl indeed fairer than Eleanor by far he supposed he should be grateful to be betrothed to one so fair sensing his gaze the lady turned her head and offered a smile it even seemed sincere almost his own grin felt false on his face as though it would shatter at any moment Eleanor had left her mark on him during their brief time together and it was difficult to shake he might well come to love Marjorie in time but even so I suppose he grimaced at the reminder that his fate would soon belong to the whims of others she seems alright Shireen's eyes widened slightly at the sight of Loras beside her oh he's pretty she said Naruto nearly gagged oh my sweet summer child please don't go there please by all the gods old and new don't let Shireen be betrothed to that oaf and thus the prince and princess to be waited in patient silence and observed their father watched and waited as honors and titles were doled out in equal measure glory upon glories heaped upon the victors as those who allied with them there were many Ser Davos humbly accepted the title of master of ships with no protest on his part he seemed glad for it Shireen was certainly pleased to see the onion knight elevated to a higher station indeed Naruto believed that he deserved every bit of it and was pleased to find that Mathos had also been Named a lord in his own right what followed next was a flurry of names and titles and he struggled to keep track of them all honestly all this pomp and circumstance bordered on the ridiculous it wasn't as though someone were about to ride a bloody horse into the keep an odd man named Kyburn brought by Rob Stark to the capital from the ruins of Harenal had proved invaluable in treating the wounded of King's Landing, and even the king himself thus Stannis decreed him acting maester until a suitable replacement could be found for Pycel that would no doubt fly in the face of the citadel and their pondering old men Goodester followed when Tyrion Lannister was called to step forward next freshly shaven and dressed in the colors of his family he looked every bit the man he was stature notwithstanding there was some consternation in his presence here in the keep that distant buzz turned to outright shock when he was named hand of the king Naruto nearly guffawed aloud such was his Glee forget the lords and ladies of the court Tywin would be livid at such a prospect and think his son had played some part in the sack of King's Landing Rob Stark was declared the Warden of the North and all charge of treason against him were dropped Sansa was presented to him in short order and they shared a tearful reunion Stannis vowed to commit a hundred of his men to track down Arya and return her to the North, as soon as possible a noble gesture and one that surprised Naruto and had. Shireen cheering in turn Rob presented an exchange of his own disheveled and beaten Jamie Lannister was brought before the throne clapped in irons miraculously he still had both hands but there was no life to be seen in those eyes as many charges were laid before him no smile on that once proud face no words or pleas were offered by the shell of a man nothing but silence a traitorous flicker of pity sparked to life deep inside of Naruto and he stubbornly quashed it he'd wrought his own fate. There was no room for regret here he looked so sad Shireen murmured don't you thin ah then her words turned to a gasp Naruto turned to see what had frightened his siblings so and nearly gasped himself led by no less than three armed Stark soldiers on either side a great giant of a man was dragged into the keep drugged and wreathed in countless chains his face hidden by a black bag he looked like something out of a child's nightmare until a bold one reached up and yanked the hood away confusion gave way to shock and shock was felled by an arrow of disbelief in a rare departure from composure Stannis Baratheon rose up and stood surveying this great Goliath of a man another gift for your grace Rob announced with a low bow his countenance grim to do with as you please Kyburn are you certain he's calm the odd little man nodded sagely he's in quite the stupor Naruto whistled even a street urchin knew who this man was he was a terror a nightmare a beast in the form of a man a creature who thrived on violence and delighted in despair and butchered babies in their cribs the mere sight of him made him draw back and pull Shireen with him holding her close this man was a monster sir greater Clegane the mountain he'd heard in passing that Tywin's knight had been routed by the Starks but captured it must have taken many men indeed he hadn't thought it was possible for a man to be that large he even dwarfed Ulrich what a challenge it must have been to subdue him if he remembered correctly the Martells had great reason to loathe this man they would be glad of this very glad indeed he mused watching the tottering behemoth as he was led away I thank you for this gift Lord Stark Stannis nodded curtly we will never forget your service consider King's Landing a home to you for as long as you like Rob took that as his cue to depart sweeping past Naruto and all but dragging Sansa with him somehow the Lady Stark saw him in the crowd recognized him amongst the throng of lords and ladies her eyes widened Naruto offered her the slightest of smiles and expected to be done with it but no Sansa broke away from her brother and darted towards him much to his dismay he was wholly unprepared for the curtsy and shy smile I am in your debt my lord Rob stood there aghast but his shame paled when faced with Naruto's own embarrassment I well you're welcome he wasn't accustomed to someone actually thanking him in person his flush lasted until Rob finally recovered enough sense to reclaim.
his sister and usher her away Naruto shook his head vigorously to clear it damn it what was it with him and redhead Shireen was next and there was much cooing and applause for the clever girl especially once her grayscale was revealed to be all but cured Naruto still feared that someone would try to snatch her up and glowered fiercely at Ser Loras to that effect until his sister was once more by his side thankfully or not it was then that his lord father caught his eye and it was finally his turn Lord Naruto stepped forward Lord since when had he been a Lord reluctantly he did so your grace Stannis was silent for a long moment then he stood come here son good luck Shireen whispered to him Naruto felt the back of his neck burn a fierce red but reluctantly did as he was bade leaving his sister with Ser Davos the crowd murmured wildly slowly carefully he climbed the steps and stood before Stannis his father bade him turn to face the masses and once more he obeyed it felt so strange to be standing above everyone to look down upon those lords and ladies who had cowered in fear of him only days ago of course not a soul knew that he and the assassin were one and the same and what did it matter if they did in this moment he felt invincible untouchable immortal after what felt like an eternity the long-awaited words washed over him i stannis of the house baratheon he began the lengthy list of titles solemnly and with great aplomb first of my name rightful king of the undoles and the First men lord of the seven kingdoms and protector of the realm do hereby present to you my son Naruto Baratheon your true prince conqueror of this city heir to all my lands and titles bend the knee to him as you would me scarce had he finished then all knelt before them even the normally recalcitrant Loras Naruto felt his eyes widen Lord Mace Tyrell Stannis called upon the head of the Tyrells next Naruto gulped here it comes your house came to my aid in a time of great and terrible need. Stannis continued gravely without you or Lord Stark none of this would have been possible I am forever in your debt if you would ask anything of me ask it Ser Loras bristled viciously but remained otherwise silent as his father began to speak in his own slow pondering way I beg your pardon your grace my dear sweet daughter Marjorie her husband was taken from us before she remains innocent free of the usurper's touch I would ask you to find it in your noble heart to do us the great honor of joining our house as a hemwell that is I mean to say he hastened to amend at the king's stony expression blustering madly surely you know I do not mean to take you from your wife continue the world was a growl with your son then mace blustered madly flailing like a drowning man do my daughter the honor of taking her hand in most holy matrimony Stannis paused pretended to consider it all Naruto knew it was a foregone conclusion yet even so he felt his jaw clench all the same is this what you want Lady Marjorie Stannis inquired with all my heart your grace she confessed earnestly I have come to love your son from afar her gaze swept to the prince and question emotion rich in her eyes tales of his ferocity and tenacity have never been far from my ears and those tales have taken root deep inside of me as I have adored him Naruto nearly swore oh she was good she was very very good so good he nearly called her out on it but his father was looking at him now and he knew better than to protest he imagined Eleanor looking back at him from the crowd and felt like a fraud nevertheless he pressed on words do not describe your beauty my lady I too have heard tales of your beauty and grace but now that you stand before me the words tasted false in his mouth but he did his duty and uttered them all the same there is no finer rose than you he even thought that Marjorie flushed Slightly I would be honored to accept your hand in holy matrimony what followed was nothing short of utter applause words of praise and congratulation were heaped upon him in equal measure as he stepped away from the throne but Naruto heard none of them the rest of the king's audience passed him by in haze. Stannis vowing to root out the Ironborn's rebellion in the north declaring Tywin Lannister an enemy of the crown and other formalities Shireen must have seen the distant look on his face for. She didn't press him wine he needed wine to forget all of this this awful day and all that happened this wasn't at all what he'd planned he'd gotten what he'd wanted so why did he feel so miserable when the end finally came and they were given leave to depart he nearly bolted Stannis caught his I no doubt wishing to speak with him further but for once in his life Naruto ignored his lord father he had eyes only for the door and safety it would provide Shireen would be perfectly safe with Davos at her side so he needn't worry about her for the time being the whispers were starting again and he just wanted to get the hell away from here before he made a fool of himself or worse unfortunately it was not to be your grace Naruto's right hand closed around one of the massive pillars with immense force and squeezed until cracks began to spread from his fingers he wanted to rip the damn thing off and hurl it across the room but he didn't dare not in this setting not with his temper so frayed absolutely not only when he was calm did he permit himself to turn and face the caller in hindsight he shouldn't have been surprised at all who else would seek to corner him before such a public venue any other day he would have been happy to converse with him but not now any time but now lord Varys, he forced a stiff not a smile he didn't feel whatsoever to what do i owe the pleasure that was the problem with so many eyes watching he couldn't simply ignore the man push him aside and make his way 
to the door lest he cause a stir and shame his honor before his father damn he was starting to miss being a bastard already so with a supreme effort he gathered himself up and willed the whispers into silence as best he could I hear tell he began slowly in a low voice that carried only to his ears that your lord father no longer associates with lady Melisandre Naruto bristled. Indignantly at the subtle insult he knew not what hate Varys held against magic one of the few things he wasn't in the know but even in this poor state of mind he refused to let such a jab slide he saw the challenge for it was and retaliated with one of his own a war of words at two could play that game I've heard the strangest rumors about you he began pleasantly some say you favor the Targaryen girl and wish for her return to the throne some might call that treason to his credit Varys only. Reaction was a mild thinning of the lips so you do not deny your father's assication with the red priestess she can burn in all the hells for all I care it was rare to see the spider surprised, but that was indeed shock that flitted across his face I beg your pardon I have no love for the red woman and her words Naruto hissed softly I'd sooner see her head on a spike now if there's nothing else I see so you do he replied stoically perhaps we might speak more of it on the morrow Varus inquired. The strings of his patience rapidly beginning yes yes fine tomorrow now if you don't mind the master of whispers nodded once in farewell good day then your grace swearing softly Naruto turned to depart a moment my lord Aarg the quiet purr of a familiar woman's voice drew him up short once more he turned slowly dreading who he might find there Eleanor shit she hadn't forsaken her arms or armor but the look in her eyes was wholly foreign to him so was her expression she'd cut her hair. Since they'd seen each other last and though he thought the look suited her she'd doubtlessly done it for her benefit not his own a scroll was pressed into his hand nearly before he realized that he looked down wondering at the small piece of parchment and what it contained his hand fisted painfully around the dry vellum what's this she regarded him with a small sad smile it was fun while it lasted my lord without another word she turned and walked away Naruto felt his heart clench I knew it really was wasn't it whatever the letter contained it couldn't make him feel worse than this some hours later he was wrong the letter was worse Naruto I cannot be with a man who keeps secrets from me and you have your probably scowling as you read this please don't I don't hate you and I hope you think the same of me nonetheless I do feel the need to clear the air whether or not you gave the Gavin that order no longer matters you allowed it when you put that man within reach of her even if you slew him for the crime doubtless you think me a hypocrite for saying such things I hate Lannisters I always have that doesn't condone what I've seen I have seen another side of you and to be honest it frightens me you frighten me I watched you kill a man like it was nothing heard you laugh at his screams perhaps that is your true face perhaps not regardless I have spent many days in thought on this and I see now that this is the only way moreover I am known to Lady Marjorie and I doubt she would tolerate my continued presence even as a consort you are a prince now and I am merely a sellsword I know you will be furious with me. You have a right to be after all I've done you will always have my sword but I'm afraid that I cannot be what you want me to be not now perhaps someday I can come to love you again all of you I hope you understand forever your loyal shield Eleanor rage and disappointment coiled inside of Naruto like a serpent hissing bitterly love he hated that word hated it and all the feelings memories pain hate it invoked memories of her and memories of others what he'd felt for Eleanor hadn't been love but he felt in time it might have been it could have been different but of course it wasn't it never was sought at all copper for your thoughts Naruto looked up from the infuriating letter on his desk scowling he crumpled it up and tossed it into the flames of the hearth as his guests looked on together they watched the parchment blacken and curl amidst the fire folding in on itself until it and the hated words within were little more than ashes warming the hearth he did not speak until those awful ashes had finally smoldered away against the burning logs only then did he turn his gaze momentarily annoyed to find the door to his study open standing there was perhaps the last person he wanted to see I did not summon you Lord Baelish you did not your grace the master of coin confessed with a bow but I felt you required my counsel nonetheless and what do you counsel Peter noticed something most strange then when the prince's eyes finally flicked up to him they were red as ruby's blood red slits you play the game well my friend he admitted stepping further into the room but not well enough i am not the son of stannis continued slowly nor have i ever been your friend come now you've gone from a nameless bastard to the most eligible man in king's landing all in less than a fortnight lord baelish smiled softly everyone wants to be your friend many who served you in the battle of blackwater are now lords themselves and those who displeased you well we know their fate pray tell what comes next in the ensuing silence he dared to circle the desk continuing i suppose you could try and apologize to your little whore get her recognized as a red wine in light of the seven though that wouldn't sit well with the tyrells perhaps a better match would thunk little finger blinked frowning as a dagger thudded into the stone floor near his boot was the 
Necessary do not the blonde warn his voice sharper than Valerian steel mistaken my silence for complacency I've half a mind to cut out that tongue for what you've done I'm afraid I don't this time the knife landed dangerously close something vital most vital indeed you betrayed Ned Stark to his death another dagger was already in the assassin's hand ready to fly at the slightest twitch of his wrist I have half a mind to repay the favor here and now perhaps I should in light of your actions. Tell me what happened of your own volition he threatened or I'll have the truth of it with my blade here and now for a moment he thought Baelish would hide behind another half-truth imagine his surprise then when the man spoke truly Eddard Stark was a fool he confessed at last his dark eyes narrow and honest and idealistic one but a fool nevertheless the words grew hard and flinty on his tongue. He never should have left the north never made the truth of his plans known to Cersei never should. Have shown his hand he lost the moment those words left his lips perhaps had he held his tongue he might yet still be alive what would you have had me do die with him it would have been the honorable thing to do Naruto answered but we aren't men of honor now are we Baelish challenged stepping forward in the face of the blade we are cowards and schemers the both of us and we'll do whatever it takes to get what we want and what do you want why everything of course came the winning answer. Everything you overreach yourself a small frown drew down the corners of Naruto's mouth I could call for your head right here right now and no one would bat an eye but you won't and why not because you need me Naruto couldn't help himself. Laughter bubbled out of him in a sharp explosive rush Peter stared back at him incredulous wondering if the boy had gone mad Naruto supposed he had but it was either laugh at it all or tear the entire room apart and he didn't want to be known for such. Tantrums besides it was funny after all this the man actually wanted his confidence how would I need Lord Baelish he finished with a bitter chuckle are those I can trust given your record you're not on that list you don't trust me better safe than sorry came the flat reply what we don't know is usually what gets us killed a fine saying little finger quipped and I still don't trust you a better one Baelish conceded but surely there is something I could do to win your favor Naruto scoffed. Exasperated he stood from his desk and glared at the man you want my trust he retorted mockingly the words dripping with sarcasm bring me a bloody dragon in fact bring me all the gold and bravos the knife slammed down on the desk splitting wood perhaps then I might have more faith in your abilities little finger arched an eyebrow as you wish Naruto watched him go and turned his gaze back to the burning hearth those very words would come back to haunt him.